First National Bank, Next Tech Wireless, H&R Block, The Medicine Shop, Pools Plus, Anchor In and Anchor Away, and these Sportscaster Club members, Low Incorporation, Burning Chiropractic Center, Dr. Robert F. of the Hutchinson Clinic, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Green Vision Group, Barkley Plumbing, Mega Manufacturing. Now let's head to the broadcast booth for the Blue Dragons game. Here's the Eagle Sports crew with all the action of the game on the Hutch Community College Blue Dragon Sports Network. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Colby, Kansas. Glenn Brunwald, your host. So glad to have you along this afternoon as we just finished up the women's game with a nice Blue Dragon victory in that one as we get set to do action against the Colby men as well. And a good game by the Colby ladies. They did a good job of taking, but by the Blue Dragon ladies, I should say, they did a good job of taking care of the Trojans, 77 to 36. And this game right here should be a dandy, Darren, as uh, we get set to take on the Colby Trojans, who are having a very good year. Matter of fact, it's one of their better starts they've ever had under a first-year head coach. Darren Dunn, my sidekick today. So glad to have you along. And, Darren, before we get into the talking about this game, our thoughts and prayers go out to all those fans that are Kobe Bryant fans as he was killed in a uh, helicopter crash along with his oldest daughter out in California earlier today. Yeah, I see, you know, there's a Lakers jacket already out on the court. I saw Kobe Bryant jersey earlier here this afternoon. And, you know, just yesterday, LeBron James surpasses Kobe on the all-time scoring list. And then this happens. In fact, if you go back, Kobe's last tweet was a congratulatory tweet to LeBron mm-hmm. James. So just a, just a sad thing, and especially the way it happened with the helicopter crash. Yeah, evidently it was a helicopter crash in California. His oldest daughter, they were going to her basketball academy along with another parent and another daughter of uh, that uh, gentleman as well. The more information will come out on that, but uh, just a, a quick uh, thought and prayer to, to his wife and uh, remaining t- children that he has. And as a matter of fact, they just had a newborn that's only about eight months old as well. So just want to get down across tough news uh, regarding that right here it is going to be a big matchup as the blue dragons are taking on a good colby team and it's off to their best start since the 2003 and 4 season which at that time they were ranked number five in the nation and had a, had a 20 game uh, mark in the season this team is marked number 25 hutchison comes into this one unranked and they're near to say they're probably the underdog in this game a little bit uh, as, as colby had a momentary uh, number one position in the league until they lost just the other night to Neosho County here at home, which is their only home loss just last Monday night. Yeah, I think if you're Colby, you have to try to figure out, okay, what what happened there? You know, you're supposed to, you got to win the games that you're supposed to win, and that definitely didn't happen when it came to Neosho. You mentioned this Colby team off to its best start since that 2003-2004 campaign, and if you want to be the best of the best, you have to win those games against those subpar, sub-500 teams. So, Colby comes at you right now with a lot of different threats, and you're right, it's a different position for the Blue Dragons. Normally, it's a pretty good Colby team coming up against a ranked Blue Dragon team, and this time, the roles have been reversed, and right now, Dragons with their their backs against the wall. Yep. Really, really need to win this, this game to stay in that Jayhawk West race. This is an important game, this one, and then turn around, and you got a Wednesday game with Barton coming in as well. Let's talk about Rusty Elmore, who is in his first year. He's taken his team to 16-4 and four and 8-3 and three in the conference, and Rusty Elmore has had success wherever he has gone, most recently with Moberly, and you know how successful Moberly has been in the national tournament. Uh, he was assistant to Pat Smith uh, for a couple of years, and then before that he was up at Vincennes, and again, you know the success that Vincennes has had. So this guy, Rusty Elmore, has been around winners uh, his whole coaching career, and he also uh, played at a very and coached at a very successful school in Lindsey Wilson, which was the NAIA school way back when. He coached at uh, uh, there as well, and uh, he's from Alabama originally. Uh, went to, to Shoals uh, Community College, so he played JUCO ball. Uh, this guy has been around winning basketball his whole life, and he's made a made a good splash here at Colby already with a 16 and 4 record. Well, anytime Pat Smith talks highly of you, you know you you've got a good coach and someone. That's exactly what Smith did when it comes to Rusty Elmore in his first season. You mentioned his time at Moberly. That team. Over the years, went 54 and 12 when he was an assistant at Vincennes. That team went 32 and 3. So he's accustomed to the success, and a big reason for that has to do with his recruiting, right? You see a lot of teams that they they rely on their assistants to do a heavy bulk of the recruiting. Well, Rusty Elmore is that guy, and he'll continue to recruit big-time players to come here 
to play for the Colby Trojans. Again, I mentioned the women's score as well as they came out winners tonight as uh, John Andres' team just keeps playing really good basketball and we'll have a big matchup against a, a good Barton team that pushed Seward to six points at Barton uh, just last night. So, again, Barton will come in on Wednesday. And I look forward to that game. It's going to be a, a big game as well. As uh, you want to pay attention to that, because there's also all kinds of things going on with special promotions for that game coming up on Wednesday night as well. So we're going to take a two-minute timeout. We'll come back and talk a little bit more about this uh, young Colby team as they take on the Blue Dragons and talk about what we can expect from the action here at the community building in Colby. We'll be back right after this two-minute timeout. Hi, this is Rob, and I want to tell you about one of my favorite places in Kansas to get a melt-in-your-mouth cheeseburger. It's RV Drive-In, where they've been serving up fresh food, not fast food, since 1948. They're famous for their burgers, but you can also try their homemade pork tenderloin sandwich, patty melts, BLTs, and so much more. Tuesday, Thursday evenings, Friday, and Saturday, they make their homemade onion rings that are the best I've ever eaten. RV Drive-In, Kansas' oldest drive-in at 201 East Avenue A and online at rvdrivein.com. Go Blue Dragons! Welcome to the Hutchinson Medicine Shop. With the emergence of big business, not only in pharmacy, but all industries, the Medicine Shop is proud to be a thriving local business in Hutchinson. We're so thankful to our customers in Hutchinson, Reno County, and Central Kansas for your support. In turn, we're proud to be a major sponsor of the Hutch High Salt Hawks, as well as other area high schools, the Blue Dragons, Chiefs, Royals, Jayhawks, and Wildcats. You support us, and the Hutchinson Medicine Shop supports Sports, local sports. Getting the most back from your tax return starts with getting the most expertise. H&R Block has more enrolled agents than any other tax preparation company, and we guarantee the accuracy of every return prepared by our tax professionals. We find every credit and deduction to lower your tax bill. Put our expertise to work on your return, and don't just get your taxes done, get your taxes won. In Hutchinson, Lyons, and Ellsworth. Happy New Year from all of us at Pools Plus. We are celebrating big this new year, and we want your savings to be even bigger. Come in during the month of January and save 20% on all spa accessories and spa fragrances. Stock up and save 15% on spa chemicals. The savings are going on all month long at Pools Plus. Shop local, shop Pools Plus, 21 East First in downtown Hutchinson. Outdoor living doesn't start until you call us at Pools Plus. Welcome back to Colby, Kansas, and we're getting set for basketball action here in the Jayhawk Conference. By the way, uh, one other score from last night. It was uh, Barton over Seward as well in men's play by one point. So uh, if you look at the league, it is still Barton on top at 9-3, Colby at 8-3, and then and Hutch at 7-4. So important for this game, as you talked about earlier, Darren. Yeah, you got to stay on track, and obviously an opportunity now for the Dragons who have fallen out of the rankings to get back in them with a win here this afternoon. We're going to get set for our national anthem coming up in just a little bit, so uh, we will break for that as well. I was talking about, I'll talk with Steve uh, Kapperman at halftime about the February 15th uh, uh, pink out night that will be coming up. We'll be playing Colby for that one again. So let's take a quick one minute break as they prepare for the national anthem. Be played by the national anthem. Will be played by the the uh, Kobe Pep Band. We will take a break and we'll be back right after this one minute timeout. Hutch CC Sports on Radio is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Mega Manufacturing, Burton Chiropractic Center, Papa John's Pizza, A&A Builders, Barclay Plumbing Company, Sutton Cop and Transmission Service, Low Corporation, Old Office Shares, Dr. Eric Severud with Alliance Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, Todd and Cindy Miller of Homestead Senior Care, Man Wyatt and Rice Injury Lawyers, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert Epp of the Hutchinson Clinic, and the Green Vision Group of Hutchinson. This is Carter Fowle, president of Hutchinson Community College. I invite you to join us this winter as the proud tradition of Blue Dragon men's and women's basketball continues at the historic Hutchinson Sports Arena. Both teams are favorites in the tough Jayhawk Conference, so you won't want to miss any of the action. Find the schedule at bluedragonsports.com, like us on Facebook, and follow Blue Dragon Sports on Twitter. As always, go Blue Dragons. There's 
There's your starting, there's your Star Spangled Banner as we get set for introduction of players. At Colby, beautiful day today in Colby, Kansas. I've been out here since Thursday, Darren. So <laughs> you were teasing me that I should be uh, maybe have to pay taxes since I yeah, been out here for four days. Isn't that the rule? Four days, three <laughs> nights, and you're a citizen. That's, that's of Colby. what Mike Stanley says. Saying I was out with the high school. Congratulations, Hutch Hyman, their first win on boys' action yesterday. A nice win over Goodland. So uh, yeah, it's, I've, I've had a nice time. They do a good job with their Orange or Black Classic, and they enjoyed it as very much. Here with your starting lineups. Here's Darren Dunn. Start with the Colby Trojans, 16 and 4 on the year, 8 and 3 in conference play, and only lost once here in the Colby Community Building. We start with a 6 foot 4 sophomore out of Charleston, Missouri, wearing zero. Demarcus Sharp, 6 foot 2 sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois, wearing number one. Jamie on May. Then the 6 footer, the sophomore out of France, wearing number three. Alex Fancini. Then there's Eddie Davis, a name that you'll probably hear quite a bit this afternoon, averaging 18.2 points per game. Six foot seven sophomore out of Port St. Lucie, Florida, and then finally a six foot ten freshman from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 23, Matt McFarland. A little bit of a switch up here for the Blue Dragons for the first time this season. Tyler Brown will not get the start. Instead, Saquon Singleton, six foot six sophomore out of the Bronx, New York. Number two, six foot four sophomore out of Washington, D.C. DJ Mitchell back into the starting lineup for the first time in a while. Josh Baker, the six foot four freshman out of Tempe, Arizona, wearing number 13. Then at the bottom, Majak Quebb, the six foot seven freshman out of Salt Lake City, Utah, wearing number 24. And then Big Fred Othiambo, wearing number 33, the seven foot sophomore out of Nairobi, Kenya. That's just in trying to. To stretch a couple wins together as uh, they lost to Pratt a week ago Saturday in a double overtime game and got the win over Don City at home in 92-75. And it'd be nice to put a, another win in the win column here. This is an awful tough place to play basketball. I think part of it is because the stage to the uh, I get my direction straight to the north are uh, kind of a stage like you have in some other facilities and. And most of the crowd is to our back, at least, Darren, to the south. is. I was in here a couple nights with high school ball, and it was packed to the top of the of the stairways all the way. So uh, not as many today, kind of a sparse crowd, but looking forward to some good basketball. They'll start picking it up here if they keep winning. So Hutch is going to try to have Colby stub their toe if they can today. Colby dressed out in their white uniforms with... Light blue colors and black trim. Hutchinson and her road blues. And Majak will jump center. He'll be going up against Matt McFarlane. We are set to get underway. Tip is controlled by the Blue Dragons as Saquon Singleton runs over and comes up with the basketball. Baker, who leads the league in three-point shooting, gives it off. Here's Queth with the basketball. Back outside, D.J. Mitchell. Mitchell. Over to Saquon Singleton. Works in the low block, blocks underneath. Goes up for the shot. It's rejected. Loose basketball picked up by D.J. Mitchell. Wide open underneath. Fred Othiambo. Basket good. Big Fred with the basket. Good to see that, Darren, as he flashed to the basket after he got the ball. Good pass down low. That's what you need from him. That finish ability inside. Ball on the outer perimeter. And they work it around the outside. And top of the key, they go with it to Sharp. Good outside again. Here's a Fanchetti. Shot it put up and missing. Rebound cleared, however, by McLean. Came off straight off the rim. It'll be an offensive board, and they'll set the clock at 20. Ball on the outer perimeter. There's Sharp with the basketball. Kicks the corner left. May has it. Floats underneath and scores it. May goes underneath and wraps around. We're tied at two. It's one place the Dragons have struggled the last two games. They've given up 23 or more offensive rebounds a game. See if the Dragons get their three-point shot going today. We've struggled with that as well. Here's D.J. Mitchell pulls it back after the dribble. Queth out top now to single to the outside of Baker. Baker crossover to the right wing. Three-pointer by Mitchell comes off no good. And an over-the-back call is going to be on Fred Othiambo as he tried to get to that rebound. It goes over the back and picks up the personal. That'll be his first. It's such a situation where Othiambo has to realize there's no way he can get to that ball legally going through a six foot ten McFarland. So up the court will come Demarcus Sharp, the Colby Trojans. Two two tie, just underway. 
rare afternoon game for Hutchison. Jumper up and on his way. Rims off. No good on the missed shot. Put up out there by Eddie Davis. He talked about we call his name. There's a contact foul. And it's going to go on the Colby Trojans. Alex Vincini should pick up the personal foul. It'll be his first. Ball comes in quickly to Quest, and Quest will set up over the corner, back outside, now to Baker. Baker drives into the middle, kicks it on the outside, got him for the travel. Just took a little hop inside there. They were set up for Singleton on the outside, but the turnover goes against Hutchinson. Yeah, I kind of felt like that ball got stripped from him before he was able to travel. Sharp. Angles to the right side, takes Baker down with him. Ball out back outside into the hands of Pancini. Pancini, Pancini to the left side, back out up top. Again to Sharp, Demarcus Sharp. He's out of Charleston, Missouri. Drive inside, a little Euro step, put up and in. Nice drive by Eddie Davis. And Eddie Davis with the two pointer, and Kobe with the early lead of four to two. Here's DJ Mitchell. Mitchell outside the arc. Goes left side to Baker. Over to Singleton. Here's Quest with the basketball outside the arc. However, Baker on the drive, spins into the middle, pulls it back away, gives it to Singleton. Shot clock at eight now. Saquon rolls off the pick set by Fred Othiambo, follows him into the lane, puts the shot up. Not there. Tip is good, though. Has nice job by Singleton to follow on his shot. We're tied at four. 4-4 four, four tie, 17-04 to go in this first quarter of play. Glenn Redmond along with Darren Dunn. Glad to have you along. Uh, KHUT Hutchinson and KWBW Hutchinson. Ball in the outer perimeter. Three-pointer up and on its way and good by Bancini. Bancini knocks it down. One of the many players that can hurt you on this team. Six Trojans average 11.3 points or more mm. per game. I was amazed when I wrote down that on my spot chart how many were in double figures. 7-4, to four, the lead for Colby right now. They are a talented team. The feed inside the Othiambo ball is saved or knocked out of bounds. I thought it was saved by Fanchini for a second. It will be Hudson basketball with 12 in the shot clock. Othiambo is getting a good seal offensively. Dragons just having trouble finding the lane to get it to him. Ball comes in to Singleton, and finally Queth comes up with it. Back to Singleton, right side to Mitchell. The three ball won't go, and it goes to the corners. Ran down quickly by Jevion May for Colby, and Colby will bring it up. May will run to point guard. He's out of Chicago, Illinois. He'll drive in, lay it up, and score it. Quick to the basket was May. He has his second basket, and it's a 9-4 lead right now for Colby. 15.56 to go in his first half of play. First four minutes have been a little tough for Hutchinson. Down 9-4. Drive inside Othiam. Both shot up and good. Big Fred with the second basket of the early minutes. Next saddle cuts that lead down to 9 6 now. Colby's still with the lead by three. Othiambo with four, the Dragons early six. Pass on the far side, shot up and good. Nice body over there by Matt McFarland. He puts it up easily and scores it 11 to 6. Hutchison trails. Tyler Brown will check in. Again, out of Wichita, Kansas, a sophomore for Hudson. There's a travel call on Queth underneath. And the ball will go over to the Colby Trojans. Went in for the jump stop, but instead of landing simultaneously on both feet, he tried to do the one-two, and that's too many. Othiambo will check out of the contest. So here up the court comes Sharp with the basketball. Baker out to guard him. Sharp takes it to the right side all the way to the baseline, kicks it back outside to Eddie Davis. Now Sharp hands it off. Fanchini kicks it around the right side. Over the far right corner to Sharp. Fanchini gathers in the pass. Tyler Brown top on him. They'll kick it the left side corner. Three-pointer on its way. Rims off. No good. Big rebound by Eddie Davis. It's blocked, though, by Queff as he got a hand on it. And here comes Hutchinson with the basketball. Feet inside to Saquon Singleton. Drives with the basket in the end one. Nice job by Saquon. Off the angle, was able to put it up and in for his third and fourth point. And now the end one coming his way. McFarland picks up the foul. That'll be the second team foul against the Colby Trojans. 
Saquon Singleton seeing what the Trojans were able to do to the Blue Dragons on this end of the court. Quickly takes that, uses it against them on their end. Here comes the free throw. It's up and good. Singleton gets the free throw to go down as well. He has five points, and it's a two-point edge for Colby at 11-9. 14.33 to go in this first half of play. Ball on the outside, Sharp. Pulls up. Goes left side now to May. May looks inside, trying to get down low to Harvey. Keeps it himself. Now to go around the right wing. Pancini on the dribble. Kicks it to the right side to drive down low. Loose basketball. Out of bounds is Sales. Last touch by Singleton, I believe. It'll be Colby basketball with six on the shot clock, Darren. So they can't let it get anything on the interior quick. Singleton was in great defending position. Surprised Davis doesn't get called for the forearm. Here they get it into Davis. He'll bang it inside and puts it up. Not there. Tipped it up and in. Eddie Davis with the tip. 13-9, the lead by four for Colby. Nice position there, was only six on the shot clock. Did a good job. Ball on the outer perimeter. There's a Mitchell drive. He'll take it up and score it. Nice job by D.J. Mitchell to take it inside. Mitchell starting for the first time since early January. 13-11, Colby with the early lead. 13-42 remaining to go in this first half of play. Ball around the outer perimeter. With the basketball will be Harvey. Gets it back outside. Franchini drives around the corner. Too far corner left. Stolen away by Singleton. Singleton brings it down. Eddie Davis on him defensively. He'll put it up and miss it. Singleton put back. Yes. That's one thing I like about Saquon. He will keep following his shot. He has seven of the 13, and we're tied at 13. Yeah, he just kind of quietly leads this team in a lot of the major statistical categories. Outside now, here's DeMarcus Sharp. Right side to go quickly. Sharp has it, shoots it on his way, and scores it off the glass. Quick basket by Sharp. Gives Colby the lead again at 15-13. Singleton waves Tyler Brown through. Now he'll take it himself inside, puts it up, and misses. Rebound cleared underneath, picked up by Colby, and they're on the run again. And here comes Harvey. Or May, excuse me, all the way down and scores it. May to the basket. He has a half dozen already, and it's 17-13. They get in transition. They're pretty quick. Baker with the basketball for Hutchison. Four unanswered points now by Colby. 12-20 to go in this first half of play. Baker to Brown. He'll shoot the three and hit it. Tyler Brown pulls the Dragons within one at 13 uh, 17 16, excuse me. Good to see T. Brown get untracked out there from outside the arc. Here's Sharp, feet down low, foul call on Queth. One inside to Harvey, and Queth just bumped him from behind. It wasn't much of a foul, and quickly they're going to get Queth out of there and get Matt Mayers into the ball game. Yeah, Matt Mayers is one of those players. He shows you that the more minutes you give him, the more productive. He can be. He finished with 6.6 rebounds and four blocks in that last game against Dodge. He had 19, and he had 19 minutes there. Yeah, the guy that's averaging under yeah. four. Put hit 19. It's solid minutes. Ball on the outer perimeter. Jumper up. No good. Tip try by Eddie Davis again. Also up there was McFarland, but Hutch gets the rebound. Saquon Singleton to bring it down. Gives it off to D.J. Mitchell. Start to spot up and holds up now. Quickly tight on him is May. He'll pull it off. Gives it off to Baker. Waiting for Baker to get on track. Again, he leads the league in three-point shooting. Tyler Brown to Mayers. Mayers drives right, takes it in with authority and scores it. Way to go, man. Took it right down the middle of the boulevard and the ways parted for him. He's able to put it in. The Hutch with the first lead at 18 to 17. Actually, second lead because that's just an... Got the first basket. Shot up and missing. D.J. Mitchell with the rebound and... Hutchison will bring it down, leading it by one, 18-17. Baker into the forecourt. Looks left and goes left with it over to, to Brown. Back off top to Singleton. A little mismatch there. Now they go down the middle to Mayers. He goes up by McFarland and scores it. Matt Mayers with two back-to-back baskets. He's giving the Dragons a 2017 lead. Strong finish on that one. I could have argued that that should have been an and one. Yep. It sure looked like it from here. Glad you concur because I wasn't sure what I saw. Hanks outside with the ball is May. 
Open to right side, Fancini. He'll drive in, kick it to the corner. Harvey gets it back outside, Fancini. Rolls off the ball screen. They'll double down and back on the outer perimeter. Here they go with the Sharp. They'll keep coming at you. Shot up missing. Gets his own rebound, however. Back inside to the paint. Harvey will shoot it and miss it. Gets his rebound again. Puts it up this time and then one as Harvey's able to score it. It's one thing the Dragons have not been able to eliminate are those offensive rebounds. Gave up 29 two games ago in a Pratt. Gave up 23 offensive rebounds to Dodge City. Colby fourth in the conference when it comes to offensive rebounds. And the biggest problem, nobody even tried to put a body on Harvey, and the ball, the rebound came right back to him. Harvey's free throw toss is up and no good. Rebound Matt Mayers. And Hutchison will bring it up with a one-point lead at 20-19. to You're so correct on that offensive board. Important to, to see. And that time, Harvey just kept going after it. Ball on the outside. Clarence King into the lineup for the first time. He's out of Lawrence. Kansas, he had a good game against Dodge as well. They drive inside. Matt Mayers can't finish. Rebound's going to be cleared out of there. Eddie Davis got the rebound for Colby. Colby will bring it down. Fancini dumps it underneath to Harvey, and he steps on the out-of-bounds line. Turnover by Colby. It'll be Hutchinson basketball. A timeout's going to be taken. Immediate timeout with 9.46 to go in this first half of play. It shows Hutchison on top at 20 to 19. When we take it, we'll be back right after this one minute timeout on the Blue Dragon Sports Network. No time to fix breakfast? Just call us at Anchor Away 662 3100 and we'll have it ready for you. Choose from our selection of breakfast burritos, biscuits, or one of our five different complete breakfast plates. Breakfast from 7 to 1030, Monday through Saturday. If you missed us for breakfast, we're here for lunch and dinner, too. Pick up your favorite Mexican dinner or take some home for the family. We're open till 9. That's Anchor Away, drive through Carryout, and Catering under the Water Tower at b and Adams in Hutchinson, 662-3100. Like a good deal? Need a new phone? Listen up. Trade in your old device at Nextech Wireless and get half off any smartphone. Then take your shiny new phone shopping with your $100 Visa gift card. That's any smartphone, plus cash to spend. Oh, yeah. Need more lines? No problem. Get a new smartphone at half price for everyone in the family, plus up to $300 in Visa gift cards. Visit Nextech Wireless today. Your new phone and cash are waiting. Certain restrictions apply. See store for details. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Colby, Kansas. 22-19, Hutch with a one-point lead at the media mark. And, Darren, I was going to tell you that I had a little gift in, in the pickup I need to bring in for Clarence King. The other night when he went to check in, he reached for the for Reese's Pieces that the Ooh. computer operator Ooh. had. So I got some Reese's Pieces for it. That was kind of a funny thing. Yeah, I saw him mime like he was going to eat those up. All right, he set him down, and here's Singleton. He'll bring it up. There's a drive inside on the steal. Missed, but then put back up and in by Harvey. And he's there to clean up. And back on top is Colby now. By the score of 21 to 20. There's a drive to the basket. Tyler Brown with the basket. He scores it. Outer perimeter on the outside. I'll hand it off quickly. Fancini had it. Hand it again on the outer perimeter, just weaving it with the basketball. Will be sharp. Gives it off to Harvey to Fancini. Colby with the basketball. 11 on the shot clock. They'll drive in. Eddie Davis, basket good. Eddie Davis showing that he can score it on the inside. Well, finally, someone cut him off. Clarence King came in, cuts him off, but Davis still able to score. Outside, Brown over the, to Mitchell. 23-22, Colby with the lead by one. We're seesawing through the 20s here between the two teams. Back and forth on the lead change. Left side, here's King. He'll drive it in, has it stolen away. On the drive, here comes May all the way down. Quickly down is Matt Mayer's basket good. May with eight first half points, and it's a three-point lead, 25-22 for Colby. May coming off a 13.7 rebound performance. Ball on the outer perimeter. Brown kicks it back outside. Stolen away again. They're right back by King. He took it away from Harvey. Underneath the Mayors. He goes up strong and is hammered. He'll shoot two free throws. That's one thing that King gives you that 
doesn't always show up on the stat sheet because fouls like this happen or sometimes his teammates don't finish. But Clarence King has such great floor vision that even though you look across his statistics and say, oh, well, he only averages 1.4 assists a game, I'm here to tell you that easily could be up in the 4-5 yeah, range if all those great passes went his way. Matt Mayers missed the free throw. He'll shoot the second one with eight minutes remaining to go in his first half of play. Second free throw's up and good. So Mayers has came in and chipped in five points already. Good solid effort off the bench. Now he's basically taking the place of Queth and also Othiambo on the inside. Exactly. Shaw from the outside. Fancini, he'll gun an 18-footer. Comes off no good. They battle for the board and get another offensive board. Eddie. Eddie Davis with another board inside. Here's a jumper from the outside. No good this time. Mayers comes up with it. Off the missed shot that was put up by Sharp. Dumping it inside to Mayers. He's open underneath. Goes up strong and draws a foul. I believe it's going to be on Harvey from the strip inside. Nope. They're going to check it and say it's on Eddie Davis. That's big because now Dave. Well, I thought Davis picked up his second. That's just his first, huh? It will be his first. All right, at the line will be Mayers. This one is last trip up. This toss is up and good. Perfect. Six points for Mayers off the bench. Good effort. 7.29 to go in this first half of play. 25-24. We tied to 25 now as Mayers hits another free throw. That first drive that he gave where he, he almost turned it into a dunk, ends up just laying it softly in, really provided a big boost for his offensive game. I like him. I like how he plays. He's a pretty smart player. And, again, he is out of Hudson, New York. Oh, Hud- Actually, it's Hastings on to Hudson down in New York. I keep saying it sounds like a law firm. Ball on the outside, the drive inside. Shot, short shot won't go, tipped up again, and finally knocked out of bounds. Last touch by O'Connor, who had just checked in. Hutchison's having a dickens of a time getting the offensive defensive board. Yeah, imagine what this game would be if the Trojans were held to one and done. Mm. Right now we're tied at 25 apiece with 7.05 to go in this first half of play. Franchini goes baseline all the way through, gives it off quickly underneath the McFarland. He'll force one up, not there. Finally, Matt Mayers gets the rebound. Here comes Hutch. Singleton slices in, gives it underneath the Mayers. He wants to go up strong, and he ends up dead, double driven to the basketball. Had it underneath, comes up with a big smile. As he just missed it a little bit right there, and it came off his hands out of bounds. Yeah, used up that dribble when he first received it and should have just gone up instead, thought he still had the dribble, and he did not. Colby will bring it up, 6.48 to go in his first half of play. Glenn Drumlow along with Darren Dunn from Colby, Kansas at the community building in Colby. The drive inside, shot put up by Sharp, no good. Rebound, Matt Mayers. He's a vacuum cleaner on the board as well. Here's Baker on the outside. He's been silent today. Good defense out there by DeMarcus Sharp. Left side to O'Cone. O'Cone out of Wichita High School. High School in Wichita. Feet down low. Singleton basket. Up and good. And count it as Singleton scores it on the inside. He has nine and will go to the line to shoot another free throw. Singleton is so strong on the inside. He, just, he knows what he wants to do offensively. And he does it. And he knows what his game is. He knows he's not a three-point shooter. He doesn't mess around with his no three-point attempts on the He's within three feet of the basket usually, but I like how he slices through the ball. Exactly. He he knows he's a slasher. Free throw toss is up and no good. Came off the front end, no good. And the rebound's going to be cleared out there by Colby. But the two-point lead for Hutch at 27-25. DeMarcus Sharp on the outside. He'll angle to the right wing. Kicks it all the way left to Eddie Davis. Back out front, new face in there. That's Josh Edwards. Edwards out of London, England. Back to Sharp. Left wing drive, baseline, a sideline violation as Eddie Davis's foot hit the sideline for out of bounds. It'll be Hutch basketball. They're going to come in and put some pressure on the backcourt. 
Go quickly to Singleton. Singleton has it back to Baker, and Baker will bring it up. Uh, he's double-team trapped. Gets the ball over to Brown. He's across the half court in time. Down low to underneath the Mayors. Puts it up and draws the foul. Singleton trying to give it to him a little higher up so Matt could go for the alley-oop. The alley was there, but the oop wasn't. But they'll still send Mayors to the line. Mayors started to walk back like it was. He wasn't going to have the shots, and now he will step to the line and shoot the free throws. Yeah, maybe a different outcome if he's able to get that alley-oop to go. Free throws up and good by Mayers. Eight points for him in the first half of play. He and Singleton are leading this charge. Singleton with nine. In fact, Singleton looking at him after, like, I wanted, I wanted you to take that in the air. No, I didn't want you to bring it back down. Mayers' free throw toss is up and good. It's been a machine since he missed that first one, Darren. 29-25. Hutchison leads it by four with 5.35 to go in his first half of play. Hutch starting to settle in a little bit. McFarland on the outside for Colby. On the outside. Three-pointers up and good from outside. New face in there. That's going to be Damian Miller. Miller knocks down the three. And Amiramar, Florida makes it a 29-28 ball game. Hutch up by one. Top outside. A lot of low blocks. Loose basketball picked up finally by Brown after it came off with Baker. O'Cone has it. Got to go. Five on the shot clock. O'Cone will pop the three from the outside. Off the rim. No good. Rebound cleared out by Colby. Not a good possession by Hutchison. Long pass down court. It goes off the hands of Eddie Davis. It'll be Hutchison basketball with just under five to go in his first half of play. Four turnovers for the Trojans. Good job by Matt Mayers. Gets a nice round of applause as he comes out. Nine points. Five came from the free throw line. I've got three boards to go with it. 4.38 to go in his first half of play. Queth back into the ball game. Get the ball down to Singleton. This match right there with May on him. He'll take it inside and go up and score it. Singleton with another basket. Hutch back up 31-28. You got 6-6 versus 6-1 in that matchup down low, Darren. There's the ball, sails out of bounds. It'll be good basketball. Hutch and I have the basketball. Many times on low block I've seen JV and May try to take on Singleton, and you're giving up five inches. Well, and he comes out like he may have taken Singleton's knee to his thigh on that last drive. May was being... Yeah, he's limping a little bit. Was being really aggressive. Could have argued that he fouled Singleton on the way to the basket, but there was definitely a big collision in there. Here's Baker on the outside. He'll be guarded now by Sharp. The feed down low underneath. Ball sails out of bounds. Last touch by Harvey. It will be Hutchison basketball. Hutch with a three-point lead at 31-28 with 4.05 remaining to go in his first half of play. Hutch will be back in action on Wednesday night at the sports arena. Feed down low to Singleton, too far under, gets it out and tries to get it back to Cleft, and stealing it is sharp for Colby. Quickly to Eddie Davis, he'll drive to the rack, put it up, reverse it, not there. Rebound cleared on by, by Harvey, he can't finish. And Baker finally gets to the ball and saves it to Cleft. Hutch on the run right now, Singleton brings it up to Cleft, back to Singleton. They'll set up the offense. Here's Baker on the outside, finds the seam, pulls it up. Gives it off to O'Cone, to the left side of Brown. He'll dribble, penetrate, puts it up, and misses, but a foul's called. It's going to work against the Colby Trojans, and the foul's going to be charged against Joshua Edwards. So I think the one thing the Dragons are going to have to figure out defensively, who do you want to go up and, and try to block the shot? You can't send two guys up, because that's one of the problems why they're not getting those boards. You're right. you two guys going up for the block, and no one's boxing out. Ball is missed. The free throw is missed by Brown, which is a rarity for Tyler Brown. Substitutions, Ursary will come in for Singleton. So we're going a little smaller lineup right now with O'Cone, Brown, Ursary, and Baker on the floor, along with Quest for Hutchison. Free throw toss is up and good by Brown. Let's watch and see, too, if the Dragons try to put Mayers back in for the last couple of minutes after he finishes off this breather. 3.28 for a minute to go in his first half of play. It's a 32-28, largest lead now for four for Hutchison. 
looking inside with Sharp trying to lob it inside. They know the height difference is there. They have Harvey at 6'6". The feed down low to Harvey underneath, and he'll be fouled by O'Cone. The reach in on by O'Cone as they had the mismatch down low. Quest just mistimed his jump on that. He got into that passing lane, but he jumped a little bit too soon to try and steal it. Singleton's going to come into the lineup next. As soon as this free throw is shot, it's shot by Harvey. And O'Cone will take a break. 3.14 to go in this first half of play. Hutch with an edge of four points, 32-28. Free throw toss is up and good by Harvey. So he hits the second one. He has five points to his credit. Cuts that lead down to 32-29. Baker will bring it up. Hudson with the lead. Right side over to Brown. Outside to Singleton. To the left side of Baker. Here's Ursary on the top of the key. Shot clock at 10. Singleton with it on the outside. Top of the key. Brown has got it on his way. He runs off long. No good. Into the hands of Eddie Davis to Colby. And Colby will bring it up. They have numbers. Now they seal it off and give it off on the outside. Three-point attempt put up. Missing by Miller. And a rebound cleared out by Quest. Hutchinson on the run with 2.35 to go. That's trying to take this lead into the locker room and trying to add to it with the possession here. Gives it over to Quest. Ball knocked away out of bounds. It'll be Hutchinson basketball. Harvey working hard over there. Yeah, Quest having trouble keeping his ground as Harvey keeps pushing him out of the paint. A rarity for Quest has not yet scored in this contest. Outside Baker. To the right side to Brown. Down low, ball knocked away. They're double down on, on Quest. As that time coming down was Edwards to box him in along with Miller. Ten on the shot clock. Ball comes in now to Baker. Baker off the ball screen. Down low to Queth underneath. Loose basketball. Last touch by Colby out of bounds. Four on the shot clock. So Hutchinson got a planner inbound here. They won't be directly next to the backboard, so they'll be about halfway up on that baseline. Here comes the lob in. They finally get it to Singleton. He'll take it inside. Strong wrap it up and score it. Nice inbound play by Singleton. It was not right underneath the basket. They had to work for it a little bit. And Hutch's lead is 34-29. He used the length of his arms to give himself just enough separation. He does have a wingspan. Ball comes out high now to Eddie Davis. Davis slips a little bit, drives in, puts it up, and a foul called. It's going to be on Singleton. That'll be only his first. It'll be a two-shot foul coming for Eddie Davis. Uh, Minute 50 to go in this first half of play. I'll talk with Steve Kaffin in a halftime and chat about what's coming up in February at the Sports Arena. Eddie Davis with the miss. As I know that the pink out night will be on the 15th of February. Free throws up and missing. Missed them both. So Hutchison will have an opportunity here with a minute and 47 to add to that lead again, which is five right now. Left side three-pointer by Brown is good for three. Tyler Brown with his second tray of the game. He has nine first-half points. And Hutchison with his eight-point lead, their largest of the afternoon right now at 37-29. Three Dragons with nine or more points, two of them from off the bench. Ball on the outside. No three-pointer by Eddie Davis is good. Eddie Davis answers Brown's three with one of his own. He has nine points. 37-32, the lead is five now for Hutch. Baker to Brown right. Back outside, Quest. He'll take it inside. Kicks it outside. Travel call on Quest. Frustration building a little bit up with Major. Here comes Mitchell into the lineup. Didn't get it in time, and he will have to wait to the next dead ball whistle. 59 seconds to go before the intermission. Ball over to Josh Edwards. Ball shot outside, put up and missing from outside by Miller. Put back underneath by Eddie Davis. Eddie Davis with five unanswered points. He's pulled Colby within three of the Dragons, 37 to 34. 35 seconds remaining to go in this 
first half of play. Down low, Singleton. Basket does not go, but a foul is called. And will it be on Harvey? If it is, that will be his first. We'll get Edwards for his second. Oh, they get it for Edwards. You're right. That will be number two on him. So, Saquon Singleton at the line again with 31 ticks left on the clock before intervention. Trying to add to that three-point lead. Free throw toss off. It's marked no good. Singleton will shoot another one. Back in the lineup for Colby. Fancini will check in. Singleton gets set. After he receives the ball, here comes Mitchell to the table to check in. Free throw toss off. It's marked no good. Harvey has the basketball. And here comes Colby. They can just about work it for one. They're just a second or so difference. Fancini, three ball, rattles out on it. Halfway down the cylinder, came out. Loose basketball underneath and stepping on the baseline was, with the rebound, was Miller. Hutch got a break there. Hutch will have an opportunity for the last shot of the half now with 16.9 to go in the half. And if you're Hutchinson, you have to be asking, how can you have one Trojan between two of you and he almost outworks you for the rebound? Brown across the half court. Seven seconds remaining. Here's Brown just about to lose the Fancini all over him and a foul call. That's a good situation to send Tyler Brown with 4.1 to go to the line to shoot the one and one so, and I think if you're Coach Elmore, you thought it was pretty safe to send Fancini back in there in the waiting moments with two fouls, and he just picked up his third. That's a pretty big foul right there. Free throw toss is up and good. 38-34, Hudson with the lead. Ten points for Brown. Tyler will try to hit another one. Here comes the free throw. It's good. When he gets his own, he can really hit him. Eleven points for him. Here quickly up the court comes in four seconds. And a three off the backboard is up and good. That's scored by DeMarcus Sharp. Just a little, a few feet past the half court mark. So he ends with five, and your halftime score is a two-point edge for Hutchison by the score of 39 to 37. Hutchison with the lead with 39. We'll take a two-minute timeout. We'll be back to you. add up all the numbers in the medicine shop in-game capsule coming your way in two minutes. Right. Needing repairs, parts, belts, or bags for your vacuum? How about free pickup and delivery for any service? Hi, this is Donna Pitzer, the bag lady. I work on all vacuums, including Auric, Kirby, Simplicity, Ricard, Hoover, Kenmar, and all Panasonics. I can get bags and parts for almost any vacuum. Plus, in most cases, I'll save you up to 40% on your bag purchases. Best of all, I deliver at no charge for all services I offer. For parts, bags, or service of your vacuum, call me, Donna Pitzer, the bag lady, at 663-4322. Hi, Brian Bowe with General Manager at Midwest Ford. We have to move out all remaining 2019s in inventory. And with savings like these, you just can't pass it up. How about a 2019 Ford Ranger 4x4 Crew Cab Larry at 8000 off MSRP? Or a 2019 EcoSport was $24,245, now $16,984. A 2019 F-150 Crew Cab 4x4 XLT, 9000 off MSRP. And yes, and 0% for 60 months. Don't miss out. Come see us at 1100 East 30th or online at Midwest Superstore. Basketballs are bouncing and crowds are cheering. Your best offense during cold and flu season is a good defense. Drink plenty of liquids, get plenty of rest, and keep your hands sanitized. If a bug still manages to get you, Ashcraft Pharmacy, your local Health Mart pharmacy, has over-the-counter medications that can help. Or if you need a prescription, we offer free mail-out, free delivery, or call ahead for our handy curbside service. Go Dragons! From Ashcraft Pharmacy in the Heart Shopping Center, South Hutchinson, and Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Need to send someone money? Pay a babysitter? Split the bill? Use First Pay. It is the person-to-person payment option located right inside your online banking app. There is no need to download an additional application. It is simple, safe, and secure. We're first for you. Visit fnbhutch.bank to learn more, or click on your First National Bank app to get started. 
You can also stop into a location nearest you, and we're happy to help. First National Bank of Hutchison, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Colby, Kansas. We're at the community building in Colby, Kansas. The halftime score, 39-37, a two-point edge for Hutchison. Hutchison worked it down, got the two free throws from Brown, but then Colby, as DeMarcus Sharp, as time was running up, hit one just across half court by about six feet. A little, little runner on his way, banked in off the glass. And it's 39-37 at intermission. It's time for the medicine shop in-game capsule. Brought to you by the Little White Castle at 14th of Maine. We talked about them a lot this last week and all throughout the sports season. They do a great job with their pharmaceutical service in the Hutchinson area. They will they will deliver. They will transfer your medications if you do decide to transfer your medications to the medicine shop to do all the work for you. And uh, they'll also give you a good option to check on different insurances that might give you a, a better uh, chance of holding on to your money. As you go forward, especially if you're on on Medicare, they'll really check out all the different uh, sources available and help you out there. Don't forget about that flu shot Steve talked about during the women's game. I will here as well. It is time, if you have it, to get your flu shot because this certainly is going around. Maybe it won't stop you from getting the flu, but it won't be as bad. And uh, be sure and try to get it. They have the softest touch with Lacey as, as well as with Grant doing the shots. Again, the medicine shop, 14th and Main in Hutchison. Darren Dunn numbers, uh, you were mentioning that during the broadcast, those offensive boards, 10-3 to 3 is the is the number of the offensive boards. Colby out-rebounding the Hutchison Blue Dragons and out-rebounding the Blue Dragons by 3, 18-15 as well. Uh, I think it's, it's more problematic when a team has more offensive rebounds than they do defensive rebounds. We saw that with the Pratt game. When the Beavers came away with 29 offensive boards, 23 offensive rebounds for Dodge City, and that's continued here at least in this first half. As you mentioned, 10 offensive boards for Colby, only 8 defensively. So the rebound count right now led by Colby, 18-15. to For the Trojans, May ends up with 8 points in that first half of action. 5 for Harvey with 4 rebounds. Eddie Davis, 11 points and 7 rebounds. and He's done a lot of his damage as well on the putback. So if there's anybody you've got to box out, I mean, you need to box out everybody. But Davis especially has been deadly with four offensive rebounds for the Trojans. He has 40% of his team's offensive boards. For the Blue Dragons, getting some nice minutes from bench players. Tyler Brown, one of those bench players, first time on the season, he doesn't get the start. He came off the bench, knocked down a cool 11 points, 13 points from Saquon Singleton with four rebounds. D.J. Mitchell has not started a game since January 4th. He got the nod in this one. Only had two points, but put up four rebounds. And he played 13 minutes, which is nice because he came out, as you know, in that last game against Dodge after six minutes with an injury. So he's already more than doubled up his time played in that first half of action. Matt Mayers, the other one to come off the bench and put up big points for the Blue Dragons. Nine points with four rebounds. Five of his points came from the free throw line where he was five for seven. I'd be really surprised if Matt Mayers didn't play a lot more in that second half. If he doesn't at least play seven minutes, I mean, keep in mind his nine points and four rebounds came in seven minutes. If he doesn't at least get seven minutes in the second half, I would be really surprised. Blue Dragons shooting just a shade under 61% from the floor. Two of six from beyond the arc. They only missed five free throw opportunities. Nine for 14, usually a little bit better from the free throw line, but much better still than Colby, a team that is four for 10 from the line. That's one place this team really struggles is at the free throw line. Colby shot 44.4% from the floor and made just one, I'm sorry, made one of five free throws. I should say they made four of 10 three point opportunities. So really, the three pointers. And the offensive rebounds for the Trojans keeping this team in it. Just when you thought the Dragons were going to pull away, got that eight-point lead. Davis goes off for five unanswered. And then when you thought the Blue Dragons were going to take a five-point lead into the break, Sharp hits that long buzzer beater to go into the break. That, and you look at the field goal attempts, 23 for the Dragons, 36 for Colby. They hit two more, 16 out of 36. That's because of those offensive boards. That's why they got so many more shots. You have to eliminate that, and I think the one thing I'll go back to is decide who you want to block shots. Who's your shot blocker? Somebody has to stay on the ground and box out. Yep, exactly. Quick half-minute break. We're going to come back and talk to Steve Kaplan. 
Again, 39-37 at halftime right now. Hudson with a two-point lead. We'll be back in a half minute. Hutch CC Sports on Radio is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members. Mega Manufacturing, Burton Chiropractic Center, Papa John's Pizza, A&A Builders, Barclay Plumbing Company, Sutton Cop and Transmission Service, Lowen Corporation, Old Office Shares, Dr. Eric Severud with Alliance Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, Todd and Cindy Miller of Homestead Senior Care, Man Wyatt and Rice Injury Lawyers, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert Epp of the Hutchinson Clinic, and the Green Vision Group of Hutchinson. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Colby, Kansas. 39-37, a two-point lead for Hutch at half, halftime. Assistant Athletic Director now joining me is uh, Steve Kaffeman. And, Cap, we got a big February coming up. Once I've already mentioned about the 15th, that's Pink Out Night. I know, I think you're going to say that shirts go on sale right away tomorrow, I believe, for yep. that already? That's right, Glenn. Uh, shirts will go on sale tomorrow at 830 in the athletic office. Um, suggested donation of $10.00. Um, just keep in mind, all those proceeds go to benefit Cancer Council of Reno County. Um, the great people, Sandy Woodson, Katie LaGreca, um, all big part in that. And that's going to be the 15th as Colby comes to town again for that one. So we'll be through our second slice through the, the league. We have Barton coming in this weekend on the 29th. Our uh, Fletcher is going to wear one of the sumo suits. Is that true? He, he's <laughs> mentioned that before. I, I don't know if anybody wants I, I to see that. I think you ought to put me in a girls game, a women's game. Put me in one of the sumo suits and put Fletch in the other one. Fletch is pretty competitive. I feel like he would win. I might have to challenge him a little bit this week. So, uh, hey, hey, he's be taking on a 70-year-old. Come on, man. You know what I mean? Fletch is pretty competitive. I think. <laughs> Hometown guy. I know that. When is the induction at Hall of Fame night going to be? So, Hall of Fame will be our last home game. That'll be February 22nd. So we have a big February coming up. It's Chili Feed Night. That'll be Sophomore Night. Mm-hmm. Um, Hutch Rec Night that night. So we'll have all the Hutch Rec kids. So we we should have a rocking crowd for that sewer game. Is the Chili Feed the same night? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so we got plenty to going on in February. So definitely come out. Join us at the Sports Arena. Um, come watch these two great teams. We're going to start to hit some Saturdays at home here in February. It was February 1st, and like you said, that's going to be that's at Seward, but then we're going to be home on the 8th against Garden City, and we're going to turn right around and, and like you said, on the 15th against Colby. So we got got some home games coming up in February. Yeah, and February 8th is actually homecoming. So you know, pretty much every night you come join us um, on the Saturdays. You're you're going to have something big going on at the Hutchinson Sports Arena. There's been a lot of action around Sports Arena with some volleyball here a couple weekends ago, and it, it's it's really getting used to the fullest just about. Yeah, I mean, I was there yesterday morning uh, watching first grade basketball, and it was a packed house. We didn't come home with a victory, but we'll be back next week. <laughs> All right, are you coaching? No, I'm not coaching this year. We actually took the loss to our baseball coach, Coach Schmidt's kids, so uh, 13 to four in a high scoring uh, shootout. And the gym three. Well, you are out here on official basis today. You and Scott Brooks made the, made the trip out, so uh, uh, doing some of the tweeting and taking care of things for for Carp in the women's game. Yep, Carp. Uh, you know, he had me tweet in the first game, so if you didn't like it, I'm definitely the one to blame. <laughs> You're the one to blame. And, huh? and uh, I'm not as good as Carp. And then Scott's been uh, helping out, doing stats, so everybody just kind of chipping in. When I look around at home, whenever we have uh, home games going on, you have a lot of kids with game day. Uh, shirts on, and you have quite a crew that helps you out get some of the activities going that, that takes place uh, in between timeouts and everything. We do. We have a great uh, crew. Um, everybody probably doesn't realize all the things that are involved in the game, but we have someone running the video board, someone doing media timeouts, handling post game meals, music. So, um, you know, if you're a high school kid out there, you know, and want to get involved in athletics, um, that's a great opportunity. So, I'd encourage anybody. Uh, they would like to do that to reach out to us. I love it. Now, these are the cheerleaders that do the shooting with the chicken, the chit fling. I guess I call that the chicken fling. I don't know. It, it, it's basically a big slingshot. You just uh, try to catch the chicken in a big basket. Absolutely love that. So last game, Katron Allen, one of our football players, he's a defensive back. I guess that's why he doesn't play wide receiver. Because he can't catch did not, did not catch. <laughs> did not catch any chickens. And I let him have it after the game. But well, it's a fun time. I've always enjoyed it, and uh, you do a great job. And thank you. Do a great job around it, around the community as well. Appreciate having you on. All right. So thank don't you. forget the 15th. Mark your date. 15th, 15th and the 22nd night. Uh, play Colby, and then the 22nd Hall of Fame, and we play Seward. So both big nights for the Dragons. All right, Cap. Have a safe trip home. Okay? Thank you. You too. You betcha. Steve Kaplan. Uh, just talking about some of the activities that will be taking place 
at the sports arena. So come on out all the, this Wednesday night when Martin comes to town for sure. We're going to take a quick uh, two-minute timeout. Darren and I'll come back and set the stage for the second half of play. That's just enough. 39-37. Double D and I'll be back right after this. Hi, this is Rob, and I want to tell you about one of my favorite places in Kansas to get a melt-in-your-mouth cheeseburger. It's RV Drive-In, where they've been serving up fresh food, not fast food, since 1948. They're famous for their burgers, but you can also try their homemade pork tenderloin sandwich, patty melts, BLTs, and so much more. Tuesday, Thursday evenings, Friday, and Saturday, they make their homemade onion rings that are the best I've ever eaten. RV Drive-In, Kansas' oldest drive-in at 201 East Avenue A and online at rvdrivein.com. Go Blue Drive! Welcome to the Hutchinson Medicine Shop. With the emergence of big business, not only in pharmacy, but all industries, the Medicine Shop is proud to be a thriving local business in Hutchinson. We're so thankful to our customers in Hutchinson, Reno County, and Central Kansas for your support. In turn, we're proud to be a major sponsor of the Hutch High Saltbox, as well as other area high schools, the Blue Dragons, Chiefs, Royals, Jayhawks, and Wildcats. You support us, and the Hutchinson and Medicine Shop supports local sports. Getting the most back from your tax return starts with getting the most expertise. H&R Block has more enrolled agents than any other tax preparation company, and we guarantee the accuracy of every return prepared by our tax professionals. We find every credit and deduction to lower your tax bill. Put our expertise to work on your return, and don't just get your taxes done, get your taxes won. In Hutchinson, Lyons, and Ellsworth. Happy New Year from all of us at Pools Plus. We are celebrating big this New Year, and we want your savings to be even bigger. Come in during the month of January and save 20% on all spa accessories and spa fragrances. Stock up and save 15% on spa chemicals. The savings are going on all month long at Pools Plus. Shop local, shop Pools Plus, 21 East First and downtown Hutchinson. Outdoor living doesn't start until you call us at Pools Plus. Welcome back. Second half just about to get underway. Hutchinson on top, 39-37. Usually, Darren, we say that Colby's trying to pull the upset because Hutchinson's usually favored when he comes in here, but that's not the case today as they are ranked number 25 and are ahead in the Jayhawk Conference uh, by one game or half a game with, in the lost column, one game in the lost column. That's a chance to kind of see it from the other side of things, right? And Maybe you play a little bit more relaxed when you come into a situation like this rather than being the team with a target on your back. So, Trojans will have the basketball as we start this second half of play. As on the far side, Fancini will start to get it in. Young lad out of France. Ball comes in quickly to Sharp, who knocked down that three-pointer from just across half court. Francini from a deadaway three, and hits it. Big three by Francini has given, has given Colby now the lead, 41-39. So the quick three by Fancini, his second of the game, a basket under a foul called underneath, is going to work on on Harvey, I believe. Yeah, he'll pick up his third. Wow. So he just picked up three, and he's a, a mainstay in the inside. Played quite a bit on the inside that first half of play. Coach Elmore's going to leave him in there for right now. Ball on the outside, Baker. Crosses over into the paint, pulls it back a little bit, gives it off to Queth on the outside. Here's Singleton on the far side. Eddie Davis will they'll call the three sec three second violation. Is that what call? Okay. So Queth must have been parked in the lane. He will tie his shoestring right in front of us and get set. Turnover number eight on the Blue Dragon. So keep in mind you have not only Harvey who just picked up his third, but Fancini starts this half with three fouls. 40-39, they put one up a little, they misjudged and put one other point up when I called it out a while ago. It's a one-point lead. Fancini shot way off the mark. It's saved in bounds by Colby, but it bounced it really high, and Baker came down with it. And Hudson will set up the offense. Baker hasn't even had a chance to take a shot yet tonight. Outside Singleton, drives in. Trying to get it to Queth, gets it himself, puts it up and in. Saquon doing a little bit of everything, Darren. 15 points for him, first two of the second half. Now Hutch is up 41 40. 
Left side, outside, Francini thought about it. Back on the left side, Eddie Davis will stroke the three. It's not there. Big rebound, though, underneath. Shot up and good. As Big Fred could not keep McFarland, McFarland away from getting the rebound. And it's four points for McFarland. Yeah, it looks like McFarland maybe pulled Fred in the back as well to get to that ball. 42-41 now. Colby up on top. Here's Mitchell. Cutters cut through. This Queth. Over to Baker. Mishandles the ball and stolen away as Francini comes up with the steal and got it in in time. Quickly down the court comes Sharp. Ball on the outside. Francini gets it over to Harvey. They'll weave it on the right wing. Back outside again. Eddie Davis inside. Dumps it off underneath the Harvey. He loses the basketball. Saquon Singleton's there to bring it down. He says, I'll bring it down, guys. Settle down, everybody. So with 17.43 to go now in his second half of play, Hutch down by one, 42-41. Ball outside, Singleton looks to D.J. Mitchell. Francini tied on him. D.J. will drive it in, reject it, into the hands now of Sharp. Here comes Sharp on the run. Two on two, Harvey will go up, it'll be blocked by Quest. And down low, a travel call goes on Harvey. Had to put right back at him. It will be Hutchison basketball. Othiambo will check out. Another offensive rebound, but doesn't end up hurting the Dragons off that turnover. Here's Baker on the outside. Baker played 18 minutes. Had one rebound to his friend. Underneath the Brown basket, good. Got a little backdoor action there. And Tyler Brown with the basket. Great pass on the wing from D.J. Mitchell. Underneath they go. Shot not there. Tip try not there. Here comes Mitchell. Touching on the run. He'll take on Francini. Now he reverses, goes underneath, wraps it up, scores it. D.J. Mitchell with only four, but they're effective. Quickly out the court. Now we'll go down. Shot up and good. Sharp with the basket. Hutchison lead of one now, 45-44 as we go back and forth here. Score was tied four times and six lead changes in the first half. We'll drive it down, shot up and good by D.J. Mitchell again. Final seam on that left baseline and slicing in there. D.J.'s quickness kind of getting that first step. Sharp gives off to Eddie Davis now. Davis back to Sharp. DeMarcus Sharp, 6'3", sophomore out of Chicago, throws the ball away. Nine turnovers now for Colby, a team that only gives it up 11.8 times a game. Timeout's going to be taken to be a 30-second or a full. It'll be a full timeout. 16.02 to go in this second half of play. Hutch up by 3, 47-44. Darren will be back with more for the community building in Colby, Kansas, right after this one-minute break. Hutch CC Sports on Radio is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members. Mega Manufacturing, Sporting Chiropractic Center, Papa John's Pizza, A&A Builders, Barclay Plumbing Company, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Lowen Corporation, Old Office Shares, Dr. Eric Severud with Alliance Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, Todd and Cindy Miller of Home Instead Senior Care, Van Wyatt and Rice Injury Lawyers, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert Epp of the Hutchinson Clinic, and the Green Vision Group of Hutchinson. This is Carter File, president of Hutchinson Community College. I invite you to join us this winter as the proud tradition of Blue Dragon men's and women's basketball continues at the historic Hutchinson Sports Arena. Both teams are favorites in the tough Jayhawk Conference, so you won't want to miss any of the action. Find the schedule at bluedragonsports.com, like us on Facebook, and follow Blue Dragon Sports on Twitter. As always, go Blue Dragons. Hutchinson red hot, four out of five shooting to start this second half of play, lead to 47 44. Again, as you mentioned, those nine turnovers, points off turnovers now. Colby leads it by two, eight to six. Here's Baker, left side, ball goes off the hip of Eddie Davis. Eddie Davis out of Florida. Port St. Lucie. Ball comes in to Singleton. Outside to Tyler Brown. 
Brown, bounce pass over to Mitchell, into the paint, pulls it back, falls a little bit stumbled and got caught up with the shoes of the player behind him and a turnover against Hutch. Probably better that he gets the walk in that situation because he was about to throw it away as a live ball. Eight turnovers against Hutchinson now. Left side, they go to Francini, back outside Sharp. Back outside Francini again, goes off the ball screen to the right side. McFarland takes it in, puts it on his way. Not there. Oh, boy. Might have been an over the back, and it was. Now going to be called on Eddie Davis over the back, and you can see it from here. That'll be his second. Now Davis picked up a foul early in the first half. He's played quite a bit with only one foul. D.J. Mitchell shaking that right hand. Might have got a, got a jam, got a little bit of a stinger. Let's see how he's going to be. Here comes Singleton up to the court, gives it off to Mitchell. Bad, bad pass by Mitchell, and out of bounds steps sharp, though, after he stole the pass. So that will go as a turnover, and then another turnover. This time against Colby. The lob it into Baker, he gathers in the pass. Puts it on the dribble, outside now to Mitchell. 15.08 to go in his second half of play. Touch spot by three. Wide pass down low to, to Quell. He'll work low on Harvey. Goes up, misses it. Rebound. Clear down by Colby. Colby with the defensive board. Now they'll take it in strong. Basket good by Sharp. He's a good one. He has nine points in the ball game. But he's solid. Down low to Quell underneath. He'll bang down low. Shot up, missing. Loose basketball. Singleton puts it up. Not there. Still battling for it. And a rebound is going to be cleared out by the Colby Trojans. A couple opportunities, but Hudson couldn't cash in. Down the other end, basket good by Eddie Davis. They caught Hutchison sleeping a little bit. And a lead now for Colby of 48-47. 14-20 to go in this second half of play. Lob underneath the quest, basket doesn't go. Had a good look, but wasn't able to finish. And here comes Colby with the basketball. They'll pop it on the outside. Shot not there. T-Bone Brown with the rebound. And Tyler Brown will bring it up for Hutchison as he get underneath 14 minutes to go in a lot contest. Here's Singleton. He'll drive in. Kicks it underneath. Ball last touched out of bounds off of Colby. It'll be Hutchison basketball. Singleton did a good job there of noticing that the defender tried to jump the passing lane, use that quick first step. Comes in quickly underneath. Baker basket good. Baker picked it off off the, the floor after Singleton had missed a shot. That's Baker's first basket. Yeah, his first shot attempt. Back on top, Hutch, 49-48. He'll lob it down low, McFarland. He'll be double teamed. Jump ball is going to be called. The possession there will be Hutchinson way. So the Blue Dragons will have the ball. And Coach Elmore thought it should have been a foul underneath. So Mitchell will give it in to Brown, and Brown will bring it up. It's 13-25 remaining to go. The second half of play. Bounce pass goes to Baker on the outside. Hard regarding him. Outside now Singleton. Hands it off to Tyler Brown. He'll slice it underneath. Goes up, and it's goaltending. It was pinned up against the glass. The basket for Tyler Brown. That'll be his 14th and 15th point. Touch up now by three, 51-48. So Brown being just as so effective this afternoon off the bench as he has been most of the year in the starting lineup. They pe- peeled off that, bo- that player screen and took it right to the rack. Ball outside, Harvey. Over to Eddie Davis. Got to watch him. The far and way outside. Here's Francini. Back to Harvey. A rotate on that right side, kind of like a triangle. Here's Sharp. Five on the shot clock. Eddie Davis drives in, kicks it outside. Sharp for three on the outer perimeter. Hits it. A big three by Sharp from the outside. He has 12. Young man out of Charleston, Missouri, is a player. 51-51 tie. DJ just about turns it over, but he gets it back. Now over to Baker. They're all locked up at 51 apiece. Here's Baker. Goes down. 
Contact was made, but no call made. Ball outside, back to Baker after Queth had a first second. Baker shifts gears, gives it off to Queth in the corner, outside Singleton. Three in the shot clock, Singleton's got a roll, does, and scores it. Saquon takes it down the low blocks, puts it up and in. He's so long and lanky. And like you called him earlier, he is a slicer. To feed down low to Harvey, he'll kick it out. Franchini with the basketball, drives, and the ball underneath the side, and Harvey goes up and scores it. We're tied at 53, and Harvey will go to the line to shoot the one-shot foul. As Baker picks up the personal. That'll be his one opportunity for Mm -hmm. Harvey. Harvey right now one for two in the ball game from the foul stripe. Free throw missing. So Hutchinson gets the rebound. Under 12 to go now. Here's Baker. First three he'll look at, and he'll hit it. The big three by Baker. That was the most open he's been all game, Darren, as he has really been bottled up. But for whatever reason, Colby slacked on it a little bit, and he was able to knock it down. Here's Franchini. Hudson lead again at three. Ball on the outside. Sharp still with it. Got a head of hand on him. Here's Eddie Davis in traffic. Goes up, floats, and scores. Davis with 15. Just under his average of 18.2 a game. There's a steal. Franchini comes up with it. And there'll be a foul called on T.J. Mitchell as he bumped him. It's a one-point ball game, 56-55. I touched him with the lead, but they will send. No, they will not send. Only a second foul of the second half of play. Franchini will inbound. Ball comes into Sharp. Between the circles, he'll take it. Brown and Baker looking at him. They pass it inside to Davis. Over the left wing, back outside. That's playing a little zone now, 2-3 zone. Here's Sharp, he'll gun up in the top and hit it. 15 points for Sharp over his average now, which is 14.1, and it's a 58-56 lead for the Colby Trojans. Yeah, he has three three-pointers, and that'll be the quickest thing to pull you out of the zone. You knock down threes yep, like sure that. sure is. He's hit two of them now. He's going to match up a little bit better. Queth inside, pulls it back, gets it off to Singleton. He'll work on Sharp down low. Gets it underneath the quest. He fakes, goes up, and gets it, and one. 10.23 to go in the second half of play. We're tied at 58. Quest, with listen to this, Darren, his first two points. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of crazy. You get your first baskets from uh, your top two scorers. They've been relying on uh, bench players so far this afternoon. Four fouls, by the way, now on Harvey. Yeah, you look at well, both Baker as well as Mitchell averaging 14. And Queth will shoot the free throw here with 10.23 to go. Matt Mayer is going to check in. Free throws up and good by Queth. Gives Hutchinson the lead. By one, 59-58. We'll see if Matt can be as productive this second half as he was in that first half. Matt Mayer is a big reason the Blue Dragons came away with the lead at the half. Outside, Eddie Davis. Ball on the outer perimeter. He'll work it back to Sharp. Got to watch him. And Cheney gives another little give and go to Davis. Lay up good. And back up top goes Colby by one. 60-59. Here's Mitchell. Ball on the outside. Mayers was open for a second. Mitchell didn't see it in time. Oh. Ball goes lobbing it inside to Singleton. Out of bounds. That's touched off of Saquon Singleton. An immediate timeout with 9.50 to go in the contest. Kobe with the lead, 60-59. to 59. We'll be back with more from Kobe, Kansas, right after this one-minute timeout on the Blue Dragon Sports Network. Just as the Hutchinson Blue Dragons athletics are a tradition, so is the Anchor Inn in downtown Hutchinson. Whether you plan lunch or dinner or even take out for home, the Anchor Inn is a great family restaurant that you are sure to enjoy. Order off the great menu or take advantage of the Anchor Inn's awesome buffet. You'll make a great choice either way. The Anchor Inn is also a great spot to meet up with old friends and acquaintances because everyone goes to the Anchor. That's the Anchor Inn at 128 South Main in Hutchinson. Proud supporters of Hutchinson Blue Dragon athletics. 
Like a good deal? Need a new phone? Listen up. Trade in your old device at Next Tech Wireless and get half off any smartphone. Then take your shiny new phone shopping with your $100 Visa gift card. That's any smartphone, plus cash to spend. Oh, yeah. Need more lines? No problem. Get a new smartphone at half price for everyone in the family, plus up to $300 in Visa gift cards. Visit Next Tech Wireless today. Your new phone and cash are waiting. Certain restrictions apply. See store for details. <laughs> Heck of a game here at Colby. 17 times this game's been tied. And sports been tied seven times. Lead changes 17, Darren. Back and forth basketball. Blue Dragons locking down finally on getting those one and duns. Only three offensive rebounds in that first 10 minutes and 10 seconds of this half. So eliminating some of those second chance opportunities for Colby. Colby will have the basketball. Last touched out of bounds off of. Singleton on that turnover, which is the 13th turnover against Hutchison. And a one-point Colby lead as Fancini will bring it into the ball, into the, up the court. If you're keeping track, the uh, suit jacket has come off of Elmore. Yep, sure has. Here's on the outside, Fancini. Ball on the outside to Sharp. Sharp gives it off to Miller. Out top now, Eddie Davis, he'll pop the three and hit it. Again, Hutch staying in that zone a little bit, and that one hurt him. 63-59, the lead is four now. Hutch is going to have to play from behind this last nine minutes plus. D.J. Mitchell drives baseline, gets underneath. Matt Mayers can't handle the ball, goes out of bounds, and they say it's off of Hutchison. It'll be coaches basketball. Talked about Elmore losing the jacket. Pat Smith would lose his within about 30 seconds of the first half of play, usually, and he, maybe he got that from him. Ball on the outside to the left wing. Goes over to Fancini. Back out top. Oh, they thought about the three, but pulled it back. Here's Sharp on the outside. Goes down low. McFarland will put it up and miss it. Rebound, Matt Mayers. Matt gets the rebound, and down the court we come. Here's Baker on the outside, slices down to the right, puts it up, scores it in the end one. Way to go, Bake, as he took it in right there and gets his sixth and seventh point in the end one as well. Pulls within two here. It's 63-61. Colby leading it by two. That's what you need in these crunch time moments is for your big-time players to step up and make a difference. Elmer, Elmore switching out with... Miller as well as Josh Edwards coming back and forth in for each other. Free throw up and good. That pulls it within one at 63-62. Ball on the outside. That's Sharp. Goes right side and with it this time to Edwards. Sharp has it again. Rolls off the ball screen. Takes a baseline left and plays it up and in. Got a step. He's similar to St. Quan Singleton. Now he takes it inside. And a three-point lead again at 65-62 for Colby. 8.04 to go. Here's Matt Mayers outside. As hit the comfort zone and throws the ball away as he thought that Baker was coming around to get it. And a 30-second timeout for Coach Eck and the team. Three-point lead for Colby, and they have the basketball with just under eight to go. It's a 7.57 mark. We'll be back in 30 seconds. There's gold within their heels or uh, uh, jewelry boxes. Turn your broken or no longer worn gold and silver jewelry into cash at Salt City Pawn and Jewelry. We give you an instant cash price for rings, necklaces, pendants, bracelets, and even dental gold or broken jewelry. No sense letting it collect dust in the jewelry box. Clean it out and turn it into cash. We also buy electronics, video games, firearms, tools, and more. We pay you in cash, so come see what your items are worth and leave with more of the green stuff. Find us on the web at saltcitypawn.com. Call 662 403 or stop in at 916 East 4th in Hutchinson. 7.57 to go in the second half of play. Hutchinson trailing that down by three. And Colby has the basketball. 65-62 Colby. Dragons only seven turnovers in that first half of play. Already eight turnovers here. Just over 12 minutes in the second half. Comes to Marcus Sharp, who's really hurt Hutchinson tonight with 17 points. Three over his average. I say tonight, this afternoon still. is. We're getting close to the evening. Yes, we are. Ball comes out left side. Now, yes. 
the station ID here in a second. Fancini back outside the sharp. Drop off the ball screen. They switch down low underneath. They go shot not there, but a foul call. The late whistle. DJ Mitchell will pick up the personal. Boy, that one was late. He determined it was a shooting situation, and to the line will go sharp to shoot free throws. Listen to Bloomberg and Basketball on KHUT Hutchinson, as well as KWBW Hutchinson, as well as on the Blue Dragon Sports Network. Free throw toss is up and good by Sharp. Now, I don't want to get into whether it's right or wrong, but I will tell you one thing that they teach you in officiating camps at this level is you want to wait and see if the offensive player scores. Because if he does, he was not prevented from doing what he wanted to do, and in that case, you wouldn't call the foul. Two free throws makes it 67 to 62. The lead is five. Just Baker, left side now, Mitchell. He'll drive in. Contact made, nothing called underneath. As coming in was McFarland on DJ Mitchell. Colby comes up with the basketball, a five point lead for Colby now with the ball. That's a big no call. Outside drive, right side. Shot put up, missing, rebound cleared underneath, coming from nowhere was Miller to get it. They'll set up the offense again with a new 20-second clock. Colby still with the basketball. 6.49 to go. The ball goes over the right side, and he palms it. Could have been a makeup right there. Is Eddie Davis with the right side. And it will be Hutchison basketball to turn over against Colby. Hey, you ready for your term of the game? Whether or not you, you call those or not, those are called game interrupters. Uh-huh, those are interrupters? Okay. Uh-huh. Well, that was a good interrupter right there. So that's now down by five, trailing by their biggest margin right now. Colby had a five-point lead at one time in the first half of play. Right now it's at five. Singleton out to D.J. Mitchell. Back to Singleton. Matt Mayers gets big and gathers in the pass. He'll turn and spin, kicks it back outside. Baker thinks about the three, steps to his right, takes it down low, gets it up and in. Same result as it gets the end one. Good decision by Baker to take it on the inside, and he picks up his ninth and tenth point. He'll shoot another end one. Foul was charged against McFarland. That'll be his second. And he, he knew what the spacing was. He, he knew how much room he had between the defender and the basket, so he took two baby steps to get himself in position for that shot. Free, free throws up and good by Baker, on, go. as he has 11 now. Another situation there is Matt Mayers knew he needed, that he was being doubled up on down the low post. Knew he had to kick it on the outside to get it into Baker's hands. Here's Franchini. He sidesteps, shoots it on his way, rimming off, no good. Mayers with a big rebound. Off the missed shot by Fancini. Here's Singleton to Mitchell. Down low to Mayers. He'll get big and go down low. Work on McFarland. Shot won't go, but a foul's called. That will be the third on McFarland. So Hutchison M.O. here, at least with McFarland in there, is to feed it inside, let him bang in a little post. Yeah, and then again, they change it. They gave it to Sharp, and it'll be his first. I could have swore it was on McFarland down low, but we'll take that. And that's one thing. Since he's been in, they haven't really tried to feed him the basketball. And now back-to-back trips, they've gotten it down to Matt Mayers. Free throw toss is up and good. Got them both. Good job by Matt Mayers. A lot of points for him. Certainly is a season high. 5.47 to go. It's tied up at 67 apiece. So Hudson has erased that. By, ooh, just about drug that pivot foot, raced, raced that five-point deficit. Outside, Sharp. Passes it over to Davis. He'll dribble drive, put it in. Off-balance shot won't go, but a foul's called. They're going to whistle this one on Baker. And by the reaction from Josh Baker, he's not sure he got a whole lot of him. That will be his second foul. And he, it'll be the... 14 foul against Hutchison, but in the act of shooting, they say, Eddie Davis will go to the line. Free throw toss is up and good. 21 points for Davis. First free throw that he has hit today, however. Free throw's up and good. Got the next one up. 
Timeout's going to be taken by Colby with a two-point lead with 5.29 remaining to go in the contest. It'll be a full timeout. We'll be back with more on the Blue Dragon Sports Network after the 60-second timeout. Hi, Brian Bowe, General Manager at Midwest Toyota. It's a new year, and it's time to move out on all the 2019s. And with deals like a 2019 Toyota Corolla hatch, was 23361, now just 19499. Or how about a 2019 Tacoma Access Cab 4x4, was 35493, now 30999. Or how about a 2019 Toyota 4Runner Limited 4x4, was 46262, now 40499. Come and see us for best selection at 1100 East 30th or online at MidwestSuperStore.com. The basketballs are bouncing and crowds are cheering. Your best offense during cold and flu season is a good defense. Drink plenty of liquids, get plenty of rest, and keep your hands sanitized. If a bug still manages to get you, Ashcraft Pharmacy, your local Health Mart pharmacy, has over-the-counter medications that can help. Or if you need a prescription, we offer free mail-out, free delivery, or call ahead for our handy curbside service. Go Dragons! From Ashcraft Pharmacy in the Heart Shopping Center, South Hutchinson, and Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Hutchinson with four players and double figures, but trailing right now by two, 69 67, with 529 remaining to go in the contest. Here comes the inbound. Saquon Singleton having a hard time getting it in. He finally gets it in the Baker, close to a five count. Hutchinson will bring it up. Singleton on the dribble. Spins it half court. They have two on him. They'll give it over to Baker. He'll pop the three again on his way and hits it. Baker wide open again and was able to knock it down. So they took the chance of trying to cover up Singleton over there, and Baker was able to drain it. Baker 14 points all in the second half. Ball outside. Now Sharp with the basketball. Drives inside. Eddie Davis turned over. Long pass to Singleton. Lots of contact made. No call made. Hutchinson is trying to get to the basketball. Baker comes up with a steal by Colby. Colby all the way down in the slam at home. McFarland with the basket. And Hutchinson just about turns it over again right there, but it will be over and back. What a flurry. A one-point lead for Colby, 71-70. Lots of contact in the front court, but no call. Yeah, and then here recently, you have Baker going for that ball, just gets into the front court, and as he turns to try to pass it, he had already positioned his body to throw it to the back court, and so that's why you get the back court in that situation. Yeah, he, he established his position. You're exactly right. That was a good call. Drive on the right side, Sharp goes up strong, and a foul. Let's see who they whistled. It's going to be... On Singleton, that'll be his second personal. So we'll send Sharp to the line in the act of shooting. 15 foul against Hutch. Comes Queth into the lineup. Pito tosses up and good. Sharp now with 20 points. Colby starting to shoot a lot better from the free throw line here in the late goings. This team was one for six at one point. Well, three straight now by Sharp. They shoot the second one. This one's good as well. So Hutchinson now against full court pressure. They double team Mitchell in the backcourt. Here comes Brown. Brown they accelerate on the sideline and they get, will be fouled as he steps across. And that'll be the 17 foul. We'll shift, put Brown at the line to shoot free throws. 73-70. Colby on top by three. 421 remaining to go in the contest. We're getting close to crunch down here. With four fouls now on Fancini. At the line will be Tyler Brown. Takes his time. Deep free, free throws up and good. Nice knee bend by T. Brown. Four straight now by him. Second shot's up and good. 17 points for Brown. 73-72, a one-point lead now for the Colby Trojans. 4-10 remaining to go in the contest. The drive down. Ball comes out and out of Francine. Eddie Davis just about dug the pivot foot. Feet down low, basket missing, rebound, fought four, and Hutch comes out with it. 3.55 to go. 
Hutchinson down by one, 73-72. Long three by DJ Mitchell. He rings the bell from outside. Mitchell with the big three, his first of the game. Makes it 75-73. Hutch by two with 3.38 to go. Left side, ball in the outer perimeter. Sharp, he's hurt the Dragons today. Fanchini gets airborne, finally gets it over to Eddie Davis in her half court. Davis will bring it on the dribble. 12 on the shot clock now. Sharp back at half court. Calls out the play with 3.21 to go. Angle to the left side. Quest comes out, cuts him off. Backside Davis steps in, kicks it back to Sharp. Wide open three. No good. And a rebound, though, by Harvey underneath. And a quick foul is going to be called on Hutchison with 3.10 to go. Hutch got they, well, what they wanted, a miss three by Sharp, which was rare today. But then Harvey knifed in and got the rebound. It'll be the 16 foul against Hutchison. It'll be Quest second. Just the fourth offensive rebound mm. in the second half for Colby. Here's Van Cheney, gets in into Harvey. Harvey guarded by Baker, backs inside, goes up, and gets called for the travel. <laughs> a little, 301 to go. Little uh, bunny hop after he picked the basketball up. Trying to go down that bunny trail. 75 73, Hutchinson with 256 to go. Here's Singleton. On the outer perimeter, ball outside, Baker has it, drives inside, Payton underneath one to Brown and he puts it up and in, caught Tyler Brown with another backdoor play and Hutchinson lead is now four with 2.34 to go, 77-73, here's Sharp, he'll pull go upside, underneath they go, they get the jam by McFarland. Cuts that lead in half. 77-75, Hutchison with 2.22 to go. Baker for Hutch on the outside. Looks at the clock. Goes between circles over to Brown. Brown on the right wing. Brings it out on the dribble. Over to Quest. Quest holds up. Over to Baker. Eight on the shot clock. Baker drives in. Nice in. Kicks it on the outside. Brown for three. It's on its way. Rims off. No good. Rebound cleared by Mann. Colby will bring it down. They'll come in. The shot missing. Recount. Rebound by Quest. And Hutchison has the ball with a minute and 47 to go with a two-point lead. 77 to 75. A timeout for Hutch with a minute and 42 remaining to go in this second half of play. It'll be a quick 30. We'll be back in a half minute. 142 to go in the ball game. Hutch up by 77, 75, with, and they have the basketball. We'll be back in 30 seconds on the Blue Dragon Sports Network. Need to send someone money? Pay a babysitter? Split the bill? Use FirstPay. It is the person-to-person payment option located right inside your online banking app. There is no need to download an additional application. It is simple, safe, and secure. We're first for you. Visit fnbhutch.bank to learn more, or click on your First National Bank app to get started. You can also stop in to a location nearest you, and we're happy to help. First National Bank of Hutchison, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hutchison trying to overcome some adversity with a lot of contact. They're kind of letting everybody play right now with a minute and 42 to go. Keep an eye on Eddie Davis. He comes up limping after that last play. He went up, thought he was going to receive contact in the air. At the last second, the Blue Dragon defender pulled away, and Davis comes out limping. Outside now, here's a drive by Mitchell. Holds up to Baker on the outside. Here comes Brown. Brown stops and shoots at this time and hits it. A big basket by Tyler Brown in the middle of the paint. As he just peeled off that edge. And we have a foul called on Mitchell in the backcourt. Way in the backcourt. That'll be his third. The shot by Brown as he really is peeling off that, that screen. And Hutchison right now up by four, but shooting free throws now. One-on-one on one coming for Sharp. And he's been deadly at the line. Free throw toss is up and good. Sharp with 22. Fifth time this season, by the way, Brown has gone for 20 or more. And he had five at halftime. 79-76. He'll shoot another one. Free throw toss is up and good. And a timeout's going to be taken. This will be a full taken by Colby. 
Two-point lead for Hutchison, 79-72 with a minute 23 to go. We'll take a half minute, even though it's the full. We'll be back in 30 seconds on the Blue Dragon Sports Network. Hutch CC Sports on Radio is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Mega Manufacturing, Burton Chiropractic Center, Papa John's Pizza, A&A Builders, Barclay Plumbing Company, Sutton Coppin Transmission Service, Lowen Corporation, Old Office Shares, Dr. Eric Severud with Alliance Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, Todd and Cindy Miller of Homestead Senior Care, Man Wyatt and Rice Injury Lawyers, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert Epp of the Hutchinson Clinic, and the Green Vision Group of Hutchinson. Glenn Rumble along with Darren Dunn. And Darren, I think you're going to probably see Colby try to take it inside and maybe open up the outside a little bit with a minute 23 to go. Hutchinson with a two-point lead, but Hutchinson with the basketball. Every possession is so important. Yeah, for the Blue Dragons, you have to eliminate those fouls 90 feet away from the basket. You had that one from D.J. Mitchell just a little bit ago, and now every yeah, single one of those yeah. is going to send the other team, or send the Trojans at least, to the free throw line. You mentioned the three-point shooting ability for the Trojans. The Trojans have five more made three-pointers in this game. That's one reason it's as close as it is. All right. Here comes the basketball. Singleton will bring it across half court. Sharp tight on him. Ball comes out to Baker. Cleft got big for a second, but McFarland over there with a hand in front of him. Out to Mitchell, to Baker. Shot clock at 15. Baker isolates, pulls back away, gets double team, kicks it out to Quest. Quest takes it inside, strikes inside, and a foul called. Offensive foul on Quest. Fanchini was there to take the charge. Quest picks up the personal. Player control foul to give the ball to Colby with a minute and one to go. And the one thing for Queth, he's going to look back and see he had drawn the double team. He could have kicked it to Brown for a look at three. And they pick it up at half court. Sharp for bringing it across for inside of a minute. Outside Sharp. Here's Fanchini. He drives, goes left side, out of McFarland. Back to Fanchini. 50 seconds on the clock, 18 on the shot clock. Sharp on the outside. Cleth comes out. Contact made, but no call. Here they go out top now to Davis. Eddie Davis into the paint. Goes up high. Shoots and hits it. They're tied at 79. 35 seconds remaining. Hutch is going to bring it up. Difference in the shot clock and game clock is six seconds, and the timeout is going to be taken on the floor. We're going to keep it here with 29 ticks left on the clock. 22 on the shot clock, so there's seven-second differential. Hutchison will have the basketball down in front of us. Yeah, I think you draw up something that's going to take at least uh, as, as many of the 22 seconds as you can. Maybe get a shot up with four or five seconds left. Give yourself a chance at one offensive rebound if you can, but definitely for the Blue Dragons here, an opportunity to take this down and, and limit the opportunity for Colby to answer whatever you can come up with. Could be a situation where you try to get the back door like they have on a couple occasions with Tyler Brown in the contest. Singleton always does good when he isolates down low. A couple different options you can go. And then also maybe you have the kick out that you can get either Baker or Brown as well. So we'll see what is going to pull off here. Big ball game. 79-79 tie with 29 seconds left to go in the contest. I think both of the things you mentioned there that, that involve Brown, they go through Brown, are big opportunities. He's, he's, we've seen him be able to get by his defender, Fancini, which, by the way, is playing with four fouls. Mm -hmm. So you like the option to maybe get him breaking free underneath like he has a couple of times. Or, as you mentioned, the drive and dish, the kick out to Brown, who already has. He's had some good ones inside there. He's had his two three-pointers here in yeah. this game. And remember, he was coming off an 0 for 5 performance from distance. And he's been able to get open on a couple different occasions. So here we go on the kick in, and they get it into Singleton. Singleton right in front of us on that left wing. 25 seconds left to go. 17 on the shot clock. Singleton isolates on Eddie Davis. He goes up strong, has it blocked. Colby comes out with it. He'll sprint dribble down. It's sharp. He'll take it in strong. Misses it. The ball will go by McFarland is good. With 12 seconds to go. Touches and trails it. 10 seconds. Here comes Singleton. He'll float one. It's not there. The put back basket not there. The offensive foul is called on Singleton. 
and Colby will have the basketball with 7.8 seconds to go. And a full timeout is going to be taken. 81-79. The lead was 7.8 to go. Colby with the lead by two. I just had a good look, Darren. Singleton tried to put it high off the board. They had a putback try. They didn't make it. And then Saquon called with the personal foul. They're going to try to isolate and see who they're going to have out there. Your best chance is going to be the quick foul and send them to the line. Well, here's the good news as far as Colby is concerned. That team, 11th right now in the league in free throw shooting at 67.1%. That team, this team, started one for six here this afternoon from the free throw line, but has been shooting pretty well the last few times. I would say try not to let it be sharp. Outside of sharp, you can pretty much send anybody to the free throw line. In the in the league right now, Hutch is a game behind Barton and a game behind Colby. Hutch really needed this one. It's not over yet with 7.8 to go. You've seen it, similar things. Now, they're going to inbound. They're going to have to stay on the spot. Harvey will do the inbounding. See if Hutch can force a five count possibly. They get it in. They get it in quickly. The foul's on Sharp is made with 7.2. There's no time came off the clock. And we'll walk down and shoot free throws as the foul is called on Mitchell. That'll be his fourth. Yeah, so Sharp is the only one who has made all six of his oh, free throw attempts. Game, in a game like this, so many time, things. You look to foul earlier on Mitchell, 90 feet away, that what was kind of questionable call on Queth on the... On the foul, the free throws by Sharp is up and good. Now we need to miss this one to have a shot. Yeah, I need to miss one and then keep in mind the buzzer three that he had before half. Another timeout is going to be taken. We'll get a quick 30 in. Hutchison with 7.2 to go, trailer by three, 82 79. Sharp still shooting one free throw. We'll be back in a half minute. When you're looking for jewelry that's one of a kind, remember Amelia Bedelia is filled with thousands of beads and stones. And with my passion for design, I can create something that's perfect for you. Amelia Bedelia is 115 and a half South Main Street in downtown Hutchinson. Go Blue Dragons. This is Kelly, owner of Brick House Boutique. Stay warm and look fabulous at the same time with comfy, trendy, and affordable clothing. You'll also appreciate the personal attention that you'll always get when you shop at Brick House Boutique. Big City Chic and a downtown boutique at 117 South Main in Hutchinson. Welcome back to Colby, Kansas. 7.2 to go. Colby up by 3, 82, 79 and shooting one more free throw. If Sharp makes it, it's going to be really tough. But stranger things have happened in the game of basketball. Hutchison, guys with their heads down right now as they travel out there. They know they have the opportunity. But a whole lot of games yet to be played, and there's still 7.2 seconds remaining in this one. One shot coming for Sharp. Kocek has one timeout left. Here comes Sharp's free throw as he gets set to receive the ball. He's a good one. It's 24 on the afternoon in the evening. Free throw tosses up, and he makes it. It's a four-point lead, 83-79. Hutchinson will bring it up quickly. Brown on the outside, the three on its way, rimming off. No good, it's tipped out, and that's your ball game. Your final, Colby, 83, Hutchinson, 79. It's been a long time since 2009 since the Blue Dragons have been defeated on this floor in Colby. Several games have been played before that, but they come out here and get beat 83 to 79 and a heck of a basketball game here in Colby. We'll take a two minute timeout, add up on the numbers. Again, your final Colby 83, Hutchison 79. We'll be back in two minutes. The Hutch Medicine Shop and the Hutch Blue Dragons have a lot in common.